Hey everyone, you've probably heard me speak about the Joan D. Alessandro case. If you've been in some of my lives, I even did, I think, a small presentation about it in one live, and I've told you about it before. It's a case that's near and dear to me because even though Joan was older than I was, if you grew up in Bergen County in the 70s and 80s, you knew her story. She is a seven-year-old girl who was sexually molested and killed by her neighbor who was a teacher in a nearby school. And it was a case that rocked, just rocked, not only Hillsdale, but all of the surrounding Northern New Jersey suburban towns where up to that point, things like this were not happening. And it forever changed that dynamic to the point that I can tell you even years later, when I was in first grade, I can still remember to this day, the chief of police coming in with a special book that was made because of this case that was made in children's terms. And I can remember it clearly because it made such an impression about this case. I can also remember being a Brownie Girl Scout myself. And because of this case, our mothers were hyper, hyper aware and believe me, no Brownie Girl Scout ever went anywhere alone at all, ever. So this case was, yes, it, it rocked those communities. And I noticed that a lot of people outside of Bergen County, like when I spoke to a lot of you, you didn't know about this case. Few of you that grew up in that area knew about it. Now, in going over the information for tonight, I found out another two interesting facts. That the judge on this case is the father of one of my older brother's very good friends, okay? So that was something interesting that I learned. And I also learned that the upcoming book that we've been speaking about, The Killer Across the Table, written by FBI profiler John I keep wanting Douglas. I keep I keep having a brain freeze on his last name. John Douglas from you know Mind Hunters, but a famous FBI profiler, profiles Jones killer and is one of the reasons that he was not granted parole. But I'll go through that. You know, um, John had said he was had the serial killer tendencies, he would kill again and again. He had the he had the makings of a mass killer. So that wants me to get that book even more now. And definitely, I really want to do it for the second book of the book club. But let's go into this for those of you that are not familiar with it. And for those of you that are familiar with this case, it'll be a refresher. And I think we'll lead up to what is in the nine chapters of that new book. In April 1973, Joan was just seven years old when she went to deliver two boxes of Girl Scout cookies to a neighbor who lived just across the street and three houses down from her own in Hillsdale, New Jersey. The neighbor, a Tappan Zee High School chemistry teacher, Joseph McGowan, sexually molested and murdered Joan on April 19th, which happened to be Holy Thursday that year. Joan's body was found three days later on Easter Sunday in a sepulcher-like space in a large rock at Harriman State Park in New York. McGowan pleads guilty. McGowan pleaded guilty to murder on December 4th, 1973, but Judge Fred Galda, which side note here, Mr. Galda is the father of one of my brother's um, best friends, refused the plea. Joan had been sexually assaulted, the autopsy showed, and murder in the commission of a sex crime carried a much heavier minimum sentence. Mr. Um, Galda, the judge, Honorable Fred Galda, was an attorney that was judge for many um, high profile cases in his time. In fact, there were, he was on a case where there was I believe it was the murder of two police officers and he was also key as one of the first um, domestic battery cases where you know they really took it seriously and um, the battered woman's defense was 
used. So you might want to check him out. But I was, I was, I was, that was another, you know, I didn't realize one until I had gotten here. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah, Fred, get out the. So the judge demanded the prosecutor try McGowan for the more serious charge. Once a jury had been selected the following June, McGowan again pleaded guilty. In November, after after the defense argued unsuccessfully that McGowan's crime should be considered second rather than first degree murder. Jones' killer, Joseph McGowan, received a life sentence, which meant that after 14 years, he would be eligible for parole. He became eligible for parole in 1987 and was denied. In 1993, when he became eligible again, there was a nine month campaign spearheaded by Joan's mom, Rosemary, you see her in the picture there, which included a candlelight vigil to keep him behind bars. Appeals for parole ineligibility. McGowan received a 20 year term, which was reduced to 12 years because of work credits and good behavior credits. He appealed his ineligibility for parole twice. And the first time the appeals court requested new information from the parole board. The second time, three appellate court judges decided to return his request to the parole board again. The parole board was told they had to base their, their decision on whether or not the inmate would commit another crime. Whether he was rehabilitated was not an issue. In reevaluating the entire case, the parole board received the assistance of John Douglas, the innovator of criminal personality profiling. It was determined through his help that McGowan has the makeup of a mass murderer or a serial killer. Also, John Douglas got him to open up and McGowan mentioned that he had inherited money from his deceased mother and it was put away so that the D'Alessandro family couldn't get it. McGowan had used this money to hire a lawyer for his first two appeals. On December 2nd, 1998, the parole board denied his parole again. Acting as his own lawyer, he appealed for a third time, but the appeals court affirmed the parole board's decision on February 15th, 2002. McGowan began, became eligible for parole again in January 2009 and was denied. The parole board will soon decide when his fourth eligibility is due. Rosemary, Rosemary, excuse me, believed that changes in our laws were needed. After three years of work with the grassroots, grassroots movement, Jones Law was signed by Governor Christy Whitman on April 3rd, 1997 in New Jersey. It says that anyone who murders a child under the age of 14 in conjunction with a sexual offense will never be eligible for parole and will never get out of prison. The law cannot apply to Jones case because it's not retroactive. A federal version of Jones law was signed by President Clinton on October 30th, 1998. Seeing the need for more victims rights, Rosemary proposed and advocated the justice for victims law that was passed in New Jersey on November 17th, 2000. It eliminates the statute of limitations for wrongful death actions brought in murder, manslaughter, and aggravated manslaughter cases, allowing the victims to sue criminals if they acquire inheritance or other assets any time after the crime. She used the law on April 19th, 2001, on the 28th anniversary of Joan's death to file a wrongful death suit against Joan's killer to ensure that he will not have monies for appeals. He did not contest the suit and on September 26, 2001, a $750,000 judgment was awarded. To this date, about $600 has been collected and it has all gone to Jones Foundation. A New York version of Jones Law was signed by Governor George Pataki on September 15, 2004 in Harriman State Park, the site where Joan was found. 1998 marked the 25th anniversary of Jones' death. Joan Angela D'Alessandro Memorial Foundation, which is nonprofit, was created. Its goals are to promote child safety and protection, advance victims' rights, and help homeless and neglected youth. Joan's legacy lives on through the laws and the foundation. 
Joan Angela D'Alessandra Memorial Foundation. The wait is over for Rosemarie D'Alessandro. The healing can begin. That's because the man who raped and killed her seven-year-old daughter will in all likelihood die behind bars. It is a free feeling, D'Alessandro told the Cliff View pilot after getting the news. Joseph McGowan, who butchered the seven-year-old Girl Scout in 1973, had until Wednesday to appeal the State Parole Board's spring ruling that he wait 30 years about 18 after good behavior deductions before applying again for parole. McGowan, who was then 63, didn't appeal, all but guaranteeing he won't touch another child. As the near finality of its setting sunk in, Rosemarie D'Alessandro has no regrets for making this her life's mission. Inside, I knew great things were going to come out of Joan's life because of the special energy she had and has, and the fact that she was found on Easter Sunday, D'Alessandro said, this is what really drove me. I feel I knew why I was put on this earth. McGowan had 180 days to appeal the parole board's early June decision. Because he didn't, he must spend at least 18 more years in prison before there's even a possibility of another hearing. This relieves Rosemarie D'Alessandro and her family of the lengthy appeals process that followed prior parole decisions. It took eight years for the courts to affirm McGowan's denial in 1994. He was able to keep his bid alive by paying a lawyer with an inheritance, but that can't happen now. Thanks to D'Alessandro, who spearheaded the passage of New Jersey's Justice for Victims Law, which allows a victim's family to take all visible money. D'Alessandro said she was overwhelmed by the 80,000 signatures collected and more than 7,000 letters sent to the parole board earlier that year. She also cited support for foundations created in Joan's name that helps the homeless, runaways, and abused young youngsters. With no more appeals to deal with, D'Alessandro said she's looking forward to sharing the journey with others seeking similar justice. D'Alessandro, who has fought tooth and nail for justice for more than 30 years, called previous appeals of McGowan's parole denials a grain of sand in my shoe. And now I'm free of that. I don't have to fight like that anymore. Now, she said, fighting for justice was very important to me, and this shows me that it can work. I went for what I believed in without revenge. My main inspirational person is Joan, Rosemary said. I would not have been doing what I'm doing to this day if it wasn't for her inspiration, and it's like she's telling me to do what I'm doing. Her daughter's heart and soul are remembered each day in the work that she does by the pictures that line the walls of her home, in her daughter's tiny ballet slippers preserved on display just outside the kitchen, and by the white butterflies placed throughout the house. Rosemary even keeps a rock from the place where Joan's sexually molested and murdered body was found at Harriman State Park in New York. The Joan Angela D'Alessandro White Butterfly Sculpture and Garden is located in front of the Hillsdale train station on the corner of Broadway and Hillsdale Avenue. I had this idea originally for the sculpture and garden because it was the 40th anniversary since Joan left the earth, Rosemary said. I wanted to do something to show what the message about her life and death was, and it really is a very positive message, which would symbolize child safety forever, even 200 years from now. One side of the sculpture will have an engraved butterfly with the slogan, remember Joan today, so tomorrow's children will be safe. The other side of the sculpture will have Joan's picture, her story, and how the white butterfly has become the enduring symbol for the D'Alessandro family and the protection of children. I don't think of it as sad at all, she said. This is awesome. They're going to have the sculpture there. We're going to have this garden. The garden will be a place to remember a little girl's bright smile, a place to remember her sparkling eyes and caring spirit, a place to perpetrate the message about child safety and protection. Rosemary's work, she says, is all about Joan's spirit. 
and the joy that death could not extinguish. 41 years later, Rosemary is filled with passion, patience, and perseverance. With love in her heart, she is as driven as ever. I don't think of age, she said. I think of life. Like Abraham Lincoln said, you know, it's the life you put into your, your years. For more information on Joan and the Joan Angela D'Alessandro White Butterfly Sculpture and Garden, you can visit the website jonesjoy.org. The whole idea was always about to have more awareness, that in time the story doesn't fade, that people then remember about child safety, John said, that's Joan's brother. For Rosemary, the white butterfly became significant in Joan's story. During a visit to Harriman State Park on a cold April day, Rosemary saw the butterfly over a hill near the area where Joan's body was found. She saw a white butterfly and it really struck her as a sign that Joan was happy and that she was feeling better, John said. She began telling the story over and over and it evolved into a symbol of Joan's energy and a symbol of Joan's spirit. Just as Rosemary gleans positivity from those moments and takes joy in her daughter's memory and spirit, she continues to take joy in the unveiling of the sculpture and garden. But it wasn't without a fight. After nine months of debate, the mayor and council say the language planned for a memorial to a slain borough girl is too graphic to dismay of the girl's mother who has worked for decades to help enact child safety laws. Rosemary D'Alessandro has sought for months to install a statue honoring her daughter Joan, who was molested and murdered over 40 years ago by Joseph McGowan, a neighbor, when she went to his house to deliver Girl Scout cookies. Since her daughter's death, D'Alessandro has lobbied to enact four state and federal laws to ensure that those who commit such crimes are denied parole. The construction and, un and unveiling of the statue, a large granite rock to be engraved with a butterfly and placed near the borough's train station has been delayed because of the council's concern about the graphic nature of the original text, which included the words molested and murdered. Mayor Max Arnowitz and several council members said during a meeting one night that dozens of borough residents were uncomfortable with the most recent version of the text, the record reported. Some residents questioned why another memorial for Joan was being considered when there were already three throughout the town. Some people do not want it built near the train station, which is county property. The text, which has been revised several times and approved by the county, a psychologist, the Girl Scouts, and the family adds more details about Joan's personality and emphasizes that the laws passed in her name will ensure victims' rights. It says that Joan was lured and her life was taken on Holy Thursday and that the neighbor was convicted of murder in the first degree and sentenced to life. I think the message that's being put on here becomes, in my opinion, more of a memorial to a crime than to a little girl, Councilman Douglas Frank said. Councilman Frank Pizella, who has been a liaison between the Joan Angela D. Alessandro Foundation and the council, said the revised language emphasizes Joan's legacy through her mother's work. Residents should be proud of what this woman has accomplished, Pizella said. The Hillsdale Council unanimously approved Tuesday the text that will appear on a memorial to Joan D. Alessandro, a borough resident who was murdered over 40 years ago when she was just seven years old. The vote followed months of debate and revisions on how to best describe what happened to Joan. I just had tears, her mother, Rosemary D. Alessandro, said after hearing of the approval. I had tears of joy, tears of relief. The original version of the text proposed by D'Alessandro earlier this month made officials uncomfortable with the phrase molested and murdered. We're talking about people coming off the train and the first thing they see is a girl who was molested and murdered in Hillsdale, 
Councilman Larry Meyerson said in July. The next version states in part that while delivering cookies on Holy Thursday, Joan was the victim of a heinous crime at the hands of her neighbor who lived three houses away. With this loss of innocence, society's emphasis on child safety changed overnight. It certainly did, I can attest to that. We've made great strides, Mayor Max Arnowitz said Tuesday. My feeling is it's fine now. It also includes information about the conviction of Joseph McGowan, the man who murdered Joan. Rosemary D'Alessandro said she was comfortable with the final wording, noting that parts of it wouldn't have been included had it not been for the public review. The final version achieves her goals of explaining what happened to Joan, its historic impact and promoting child safety, she said. We couldn't change what happened. It had to be there, D'Alessandro said. Children weren't playing in the woods anymore. They weren't walking down the street. This is historic. The new monument will be built on the grassy area in front of the Hillsdale train station. D'Alessandro said she hoped to unveil it on April 3rd, the anniversary of the first Jones Law, and she got to do that, okay? D'Alessandro is also seeking support for a new Jones Law in New Jersey, which would extend the age from 14 to 18. Anyone who wants to help can obtain a petition packet, or they can email rosebd at email.com or reach out via the Jones Joy Facebook page. This is a message for society, D'Alessandro said. I will never stop fighting for that. Now, Joan's case and Rosemary's personal story are included in nine chapters of the new book, The Killer Across the Table by John Douglas and Mark Olshaker. This is really something that really makes me want to buy the book immediately. I didn't know this when I had already wanted to buy the book, but knowing that it has nine chapters devoted to Joan D'Alessandro and Rosemary Alessandro and what happened by John Douglas is just amazing to me. And I can't wait to get this book and read about that. Because like I said, this case is one that I grew up with that most people that grew up in Bergen County will remember, okay? Because it instilled a fear that there wasn't prior to this. So very, um, very important. And I really want to check out this book. So thank you very much for coming along with me. I think I showed you or told you a little bit about this in another live, but because it was in a live, you know, sometimes it gets mixed in there. So I wanted to do another presentation of this information by itself. And then finding out that it's in this book, when I do read the book and read those nine chapters, I will do another video about that after I see what John did to profile this killer and show that he had you know serial killer tendencies and he would come out and he would murder again in all probability so i will definitely dive deeper into that all right thank you guys so much for watching now one more thing Remembering Joan, the motto for Joan's Joy, a memorial foundation in Joan D. Alessandro's name reads, Remember Joan Today, so tomorrow's children will be safe. So you can check out the, um, the foundation and everything. The websites are in the presentation and check it out. It's a very, you know, valuable resource and a great foundation.